That thing looks like it'd be fun. So if you couldn't tell from my video, we're back at the exact same camping spot that I was in my last video because I just came back here for my last night just outside of Vegas. And if you didn't watch my last video or you're new here, my name is Ryan and I live in the back of my van full time traveling across the country. I'm currently on a very elongated trip up to Alaska, heading up through California right now. And then I'll be going through Yosemite and then Southern Utah and then up through Montana into Alaska, hopefully within the next two months. Also last night, since I had a day where I didn't have to film. I did deep clean the entire van, got these all cleaned off. Everything's all put together except for the dishes that I used to make dinner last night and breakfast this morning. But yeah, it's always super nice when the van is super clean. All right, I guess we are running out of water too. My water pressure is dropping significantly. There's not as much water coming out of the tap as usual. And uh, my pump is staying on for a lot longer trying to pressurize the system. I don't know if you guys can hear it. So we are probably on our last few cups of water. Luckily I had enough to make myself coffee and I was planning to, but I guess we won't be doing these dishes this morning because I don't have enough water to do them. But the lack of water isn't too big of an issue because I'm hoping on the way to our spot that we're going to today, there's gonna be a place I can fill up my water tanks. So while I was busy deep cleaning the van last night, I actually cleaned out my entire toilet, which was kind of badly overdue. Um, and for those of you who don't know, I do have a toilet in my van. I only use it for going number one and not number two, because as you can imagine, that would be the ultimate pain to clean out. So I've never had to use it for number two. I've only ever used holes that I dig out in the wilderness or public toilets. So essentially that toilet is just used for late nights when it's either freezing cold outside or I'm stealth camping in the city and there's not an available restroom right around me. I can just pull this open, go to the bathroom real quick, and then hop right back in bed. And then to uh, empty it, you kind of just detach the top from the bottom and then dump it out in either a toilet or somewhere where you can dump out your pee. So yeah, there's your crash course on van bathroom dynamics. So the place that we're going to today is somewhere that I have wanted to check out for probably the last three years since I've been living in the van and driving in between Las Vegas and California, which I've done multiple times. And anybody who has also made the drive from Las Vegas to California has probably thought the same thing as me because the place that I'm heading to today after I fill my water tank is Zizix Road on Interstate 15 in California and it's spelled Z-Z-Y-Z-X Road. And yes, it is an actual real road in the state of California. And every time that I've driven by it, I've always been so intrigued by what's down that road, why it's there, and how it got that ridiculous name. So we're only about an hour and a half away from it. So I figured, drive down there, check it out, and see what's down there. I did some research last night and apparently there's some old abandoned desert oasis spring that used to be some sort of resort that apparently offered miracle healings for people who would travel out there, so. I'm excited to go check it out and we didn't forget our chair again, so we're gonna get that put away and then we're gonna get out of here and leave our little lake bed campsite and I got a bunch of trash I gotta throw out too and start heading over there. <sighs> All right, let's see if we can find a uh, place where we can fill up our water on the way there. All right, and so it looks like there is an Arco gas station that has some sketchy water spout fill up. And apparently it's potable water and apparently they don't care if you use it. So we're gonna head there, see if we can fill up our tanks there. And that spot is actually only 10 minutes from ZZYZX Road or Zizix Road. And if you don't believe me, it is actually called Zizix Road. I looked up how to pronounce it and apparently the guy who named it wanted it to be the last word in the English language. And since there was that hot spring resort at the end of it, it was supposed to be the last word in health but apparently that's all abandoned now or mostly abandoned i think there's a research center down there or something but either way we're gonna go check it out
Okay, so that's the Chevron right there where the water spigot should be at. And I think it's right around the back. I don't know if you can see where that RV is parked. But I'm honestly not 100% sure, so we're gonna find out. So it should be right where that RV right there is, but they honestly might be filling their tanks. So we might just have to wait. And yep, it looks like there is a line of RVs over there filling their tanks, so we just gotta wait for them. Ooh. All right, so while we're waiting for those RVs to finish filling up, because I know that they have large water tanks, so they're gonna take a little bit of time. I ran across the street to Taco Bell. I got myself a beefy crunch burrito. And I also used a bathroom. It was probably one of the nastiest bathrooms I've ever used. The floor was covered in water. And when I went to flush the toilet, a jet stream of water shot out from the back of the toilet into the wall. And it looked like they just had left it there and just truly do not care that it uh, explodes all over the place when you flush it. So that was interesting. But it looks like, it looks like there's only one other RV, or I guess Sprinter van up there that was filling their tank. So I'm gonna go pull in behind them. So someone else doesn't pull in and snag that next spot. And it looks like they actually just finished. There we go. I think that's the uh, spigot right there. Someone commented on my last video that every time I open these back doors, something falls out, which is so true. Whether it's a tripod, those things, something falling out of the back, nothing back here is ever fully secured. There we go. She's filling up. And also for those of you guys wondering, I do have a four stage filtration for water that's built into my van. And then also I have this external filter to filter out as much as I can before it actually goes into the van's water tank. So <clears throat> that's how I feel safe drinking water from spots like this. And also I only get places that have been confirmed to be potable water or potable water. I don't know how you say it. So yeah, and there's also spots like this all over the country. So it's never too difficult to find water to fill up your tanks. So also while the uh, tank is there filling up, fun fact about this town of Baker, California. If I walk kind of out here in the parking lot, you can see it right there is the world's tallest thermometer because this town is known as the gateway to Death Valley and <clears throat> Death Valley is where the hottest temperature ever recorded on planet Earth was. So that's pretty cool. But this town is just kind of like a small little coalition of almost it looks like entirely re restaurants and gas stations just off the side of the interstate. This water has a pretty fast flow, so we shouldn't be here for too long waiting for it to fill up. We're already about three fourths full. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see the water line on that tank, but it is just about full. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the water, unhook all this, and then we're gonna get out of here. Now that we've got that water tank filled, we're only about 10 minutes from uh, Zizix or ZZYZX Road. The amount of times that I have driven by this sign and been so curious and thought about what is down Zizix Road is crazy and I'm so excited to finally head down there and see what it's all about. All right, we've stopped at the sign. Let's get heading down the road. And here we go. This is the start of ZZY ZX Road. Or if you want to say it phonetically, I think that guy was taking a pee, Zizix Road. So I don't know how well you guys can see it on camera, but up there, that kind of white strip that's along the bottom is called Soda Lake. And it's a salty, dry lake bed, kind of like the Great Salt Flats in uh, Utah, but not as big and I don't think as salty. And also you can't drive on this dry lake bed like you can the uh, Great Salt Lakes. So I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see it, but that right there, I think is the oasis where the old mineral springs were. And you can kind of tell because there's all those California fan palms surrounding it off in the distance. And there's also a bunch lining the road now. And I don't know why, but this feels kind of creepy. It almost feels like I'm not supposed to be here. All right. So I guess you got to park in here and then we can go out and explore. So this is it. And there is 
not a single person here but me, so it's kind of weird. So back in the 1800s, this place was actually a military camp called Camp Soda Springs before it was a uh, mineral resort. And now when I'm walking down here, I can see people. So on the other side of this rope is the Desert Studies Center used by California State University. So public access is kind of on this side and then the other side is the Desert Studies Center. So yeah, it's just kind of this oasis in the middle of the desert. So the name of ZZY, ZX Road, came from Curtis Howe, who came here and started the Zizix Mineral Springs and Health Spa right here by these waters. And it used to attract a ton of visitors for 30 years in the mid 1900s. So the resort, which I'm guessing is what that is over there, was actually a huge success and had guests coming from all over the world to jump in their healing waters and they shipped their medical products all over the world up until the 70s when the government realized the people that owned this had no legal claim to the land and commandeered it and now it's under the management of the Bureau of Land Management which also manages most of the campsites that I stay at but you can kind of see some of the remnants I guess this boat was used for something in the water over there yeah it's really weird out here it's like this random oasis on the edge of this desolate salty lake in the middle of nowhere down this weirdly named road. And actually, if you do some research on this place, you can find that back when it was a military base and, and used as kind of an outpost for travelers, there are all these stories of miraculous healings and stuff that came from these supposed healing waters and all of that kind of stuff. So believe what you want about it. Maybe they did have some medicinal benefits or there's something going on with this water, but I guess who really knows. Now this little road and this little desert oasis can claim that they are the last word in health and the last word in the English dictionary. Some cool street names too. Up here on the uh, street sign it says Castle Way and then Boulevard of Dreams. And there's all these scientists kind of all over the place with nets. Looks like they're kind of catching bugs or something. I don't know what they're doing, but I don't want to walk up to them and bother them when they're doing their studies. So we'll leave them be. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That is what's down America's weirdest road. Who would have thought? So if you're ever driving from Las Vegas to California or California to Las Vegas, I think it's definitely worth a stop. There's a lot of, uh, cool history and it's a pretty neat little spot. And when I was doing my research, fun fact, the Mojave Desert, even though one of the smallest or the smallest desert in the world is the most diverse, which I thought was pretty interesting. But yeah, it doesn't look like it's the most popular of places to stop by considering there's nobody else here other than me and the scientists that are researching stuff. But here's a little uh, info board on. So this is what the uh, resort would have looked like in its heyday. And you can kind of pause this to read. And then it says that uh, he made the word Zizix to be the last word in health, ensuring it would be the last thing in any directory, which is kind of smart. Because back in the day, the way that people found businesses was looking through the phone books and stuff. So being the last one made you stand out a little bit. But yeah, it looks like they had these little bathtubs and stuff that people could like lay down in and soak in the healing waters. There you go. Also, I got these sunglasses a while ago and I forgot that I had them. And I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it on camera, but I can change the shade level of them by pressing this button. So this is like the lightest shade, a little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little bit darker, and then back to normal. And then also they play music through like bone conduction or something. I'm not convinced it's actually anything different than just a small speaker, but it is kind of the perfect solution for listening to music while you're on a hike and not having to use a speaker, annoying other people that are on the hike. And also still being able to hear your surroundings, so. I'm not even sure if they're still available because I got them from a Kickstarter campaign, but they're called Ampere, A-M-P-E-R-E -E, sunglasses, but they're pretty cool. But anyways, now that I've kind of itched that scratch of finding out what's down this weird road, I'm going to continue on my journey kind of towards Southern California because that's where I'm headed right now. My plan is to drive down through Southern California, hit a bunch of cool spots along the way, and then kind of just go north up the coast as far as I can go. And then right around the start of May, start heading back down south towards Southern Utah and then shoot up to Alaska and finish this road trip. All right, back to the highway we go. All right, so we made it back up to the intersection with the highway, and I was looking online to find a spot for camping tonight, and since I really need to shower, I don't know if you guys can tell, but my cheeks are super red, and I'm not really sure what it is, honestly. I think it's dry skin, but it happens every so often. Um, so I really need to take a warm shower tonight and kind of moisturize that area so it doesn't get any worse. So I think I'm gonna drive southwest just about another hour to a uh, travel stop to camp tonight and take myself a uh, expensive shower. But we're about an hour and a half away, so I will check in with you guys 
once I get there. All right, so we made it here, right off this exit, kind of out here in the middle of nowhere, California. There should be a Love's Travel Stop somewhere over there, and I typically prefer staying at Love's Travel Stops whenever I can. I sometimes drive farther to seek one out just because their bathrooms are always the cleanest and in my opinion are one of the nicer truck stops uh, in America. So if I'm gonna end up staying at a truck stop at any point on my travels, I always try to find Love's Travel Stops. And typically if you just park on kind of the outskirts, don't take those like front row of parking spots, you're fine to stay here overnight. Some of them do have signs saying that they don't allow parking overnight, but this one doesn't look like it does, so we're gonna go ahead and probably just take this spot right here and call this home for the night. All right, so I'm feeling extra gross right now, so I think before I do anything, I'm gonna get myself packed up and take a shower. So honestly, even though that these showers are actually pretty expensive, in a lot of ways they're super worth it just because it's just about as close as you're gonna get to a fully private shower while living on the road, second to getting an Airbnb or something like that. Because you'll see when I get in there that it's like its own uh, private room with its own toilet. They give you towels and everything. I usually bring my own anyways, but specifically at Love's, they're always super nice. But regardless of how nice they are, I always bring shower shoes to wear because I hate stepping on the wet ground in the shower without them. Thank you very much. How's it going? Can I see the shower? Sure. All right, we got our shower and luckily there was no wait, so we had to go right in. This is it, you get your own private toilet, towels and stuff, and then it's this big, massive shower that you get to use, so it's super nice. And whenever I come in here, they always have these fans on, so I have to turn them off because I hate getting out of the shower and having these fans blowing me. It makes me super cold. And I've always seen that some of the people comment that they always fast forward through whenever I take a shower, so this time, I'm just gonna do that for you. There we go, shower complete, all nice and clean. Feeling way better. It's crazy what a uh, nice warm shower can do for you in terms of how good you feel. All right, got myself a little Perrier. Back to the van we go. All right, so now that we've got the van cleaned up, I'm cleaned up, and we have secured a little stealth camping spot for the night, I think, that I'm gonna hop on and play a little bit of Rocket League before cooking dinner and see if we can rank up. I've actually been playing Rocket League a lot more than I usually do, and the other day I was playing with some uh, some new friends I made in my Discord server, and I think I might start just jumping in the Discord and playing Rocket League and kind of chatting with anyone who's in there. So if you want to hang out and ask some questions, watch some Rocket League, join my Discord. The uh, link to that is in the description of this video and also in the About Me on my YouTube page. There we go. Starting off strong. Nice. There we go. All right. Took our first loss. I think now it's time to make some dinner. So yesterday for dinner I made some uh, taco bowls and I still have some meat left over from that. So I'm just gonna whip up some uh, reheated taco bowls tonight and just make some fresh minute rice to go with it. Now that we have water again, I can cook and do my dishes later tonight. Delicious. All right, rice is done, meat is done. Add a little bit of lime and then salt to the rice. We're good to eat. I also warmed up some uh, refried beans to throw in there and then chopped up some tomato to top it as well. And sadly, I don't have any shredded cheese, so we're gonna have to live without that. And there we go. Super easy little taco bowl for dinner tonight. Delicious. So this truck stop is actually pretty nice. It's one of the uh, more quiet ones that I've been to. Sometimes when you stay at places like this, the only place to park is like right next to the trucks, which keeps their uh, 
the generator's on all night, so it's super loud. But at this one, I'm far enough away where it's just kind of a low hum, so it's not bad. But the sun has set, and yet another lovely love truck stop. So as always, I appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed this video, think about subscribing. It really does help out the channel. And also, if you want to check out my merch, the link is in the description. I got hoodies, t-shirts, stickers, uh, and a bunch more cool stuff on the way. All that have these uh, topographic maps on them. So that's a wrap on just another day, and I will catch you guys next time.